Welcome, this is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. We're doing the 23rd installment of our Q&A episodes. We often do these episodes live, not always, but usually. And we have a lot of fun. If you don't know me, I'm Jeremy Lesniak, joined by my good friend, co-host, Andrew Adams. That's me. And what do we do here at Whistlekick? We talk about martial arts, traditional martial arts. We love traditional martial arts. And the stated mission of our company is to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists worldwide, no matter what you train, how, when, where, why, with whom you train. We simply hope that you train because it, let's face it, martial arts makes us better versions of ourselves. We become better people through our training and that's why we're so passionate about it. And if you train and you watch or listen, you probably resonate with that mission. If you want to support us in some way, you could buy something at whistlekick.com with the code podcast15. You could join our Patreon, starts at $2 a month. And we've also got the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. You can go there and see all the ways you can help us, direct links to leaving reviews, all kinds of good stuff. And we even give you some exclusive bonus content. It's free. It's like a free Patreon. And I update it weekly. I updated it yesterday. Nice. Q&As. Q&As. I have a bunch of Qs. Are right they good here? Qs? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I guess you'll be, the, you'll be the determining factor as to if they're good Qs or not. We're finding out. We're gonna. We gonna find out. Yeah. Are you, are you ready for your first? I'm cue? always ready. Okay. Born ready. All right. I was born to be wild. Um. So, the first cue. Oh, and there's a time limit on these. I get five minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Five minutes. But but they might not have known that. True. We needed to remind them. Okay. Maybe new people. It's always true. assume there are new people. In. It is. You're right. Absolutely right. All right. So the first question comes from Mr. Chris Rickard. Chris Rickard. Hi, Chris. Chris's question is, how competitive is too competitive? When it gets in the way of your goals, right? For a lot of us, being competitive is, it's a drive, right? We were, many of us were raised to be as good as we can be. And sometimes as good as we can be gets confused with the best, right? You can be the best and still not be as good as you can be. You can also be as good as you can be and be, you know, last in the pack. I have a pretty strong competitive drive. And there have been times in my life in martial arts and out of martial arts where it got a little bit too far. I found myself competing about things that did not matter. And the best example I can give actually comes outside of the martial arts uh, long-time listeners and my friends know for about a decade, I was pretty heavily into CrossFit. And just the way CrossFit happens, there's a competitive bent to it at most of the gyms. Mm -hmm. And I found myself investing tremendous amounts of time and money to be one of the best at the gym. Not so good I could go on and... and enter and win competitions. I just wanted to be the best among the people around me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I say I invested a lot of time and money, I mean a lot of time and money. I mean, I was putting between food and rehabilitation and everything. It was hours a day. Mm. And I woke up one day and went, why? This isn't, it's not that important to me. I just felt compelled because of my competitive drive. Now, if something that had been incredibly important to me was being a successful competitive crossfitter, mm -hmm. sure, would have made all kinds of sense to do that. And I think we can say the same thing about just about anything, but let's bring it back to martial arts. If you have stated goals around, let's say, career success or family or, or, or something, and you are sacrificing those things that are important to you simply because someone that you think is not as good as you bested you at the last martial arts tournament. And now you're training extra hard and doing these things and you're making sacrifices at things that, well, just one, once I do this, once I prove this, mm, yeah, yeah, right. That's where it becomes unhealthy. So to me, it's not a degree of competitiveness. It's whether or not the spirit of competition lines up with your goals. If it doesn't, any amount is probably too much. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. For me, it would be when the competition, competitive nature becomes obsessive. 
And so then the, the, the question is, well, how do you know it's obsessive? When it starts taking, when you start changing your life around, changing your regular habits and routines around being competitive, then I think it starts to walk the line of being now, obsessive. Now, I, I, I thought about that. That's actually the first place I was going to go. But mm -hmm. think of, you know, when I think of, of athletes, I always go back to Michael Jordan because mm -hmm. he's, he's such a well-recognized figure. He was obsessive. But it was also what was most important to him. Yeah, fair. Okay, I get that. His too. life was that because that's what he wanted his life to be. I've known people that end up competitive, even in class. I, I've, I've had people line up next to me, and they're trying to show me up. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> you can kick higher than me. I don't care. Yeah. For whatever reason, they've decided that they need to be better than me or appear better than me in that moment when if someone were to sit them down and say, why do you come to class? They would never say, because I want to be the best in class or I want to have the highest kicks in class. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan would have said, because I want to be and remain the best in the world. Yeah, well, that's fair. Right. Okay. Um, you know what I'm super competitive about? I want to have more reviews of our podcast than any other podcast in the world. That's we do I mean. decently on reviews. Ratings, I should say. We do decently on ratings. We don't do so well on reviews. And it makes sense because you can click five stars a lot yeah. easier than you can click five stars and go typey, typey, typey. Yeah, yeah. We missed doing a QA and a episode in February. I was traveling and, and it was just it was busy. Yep. Uh, it's a, we could use the excuse it's a short month. And it is, it's the shortest it is. month, in fact. If, if if competing to be the shortest month were a competition, February would win every year. That's true. Every single year. <laughs> it would quite a, Quite an impressive victory. Yeah, yeah. At least until as far back as February was a thing. Why do we ask for reviews? Because it helps spread the show. Yeah. Those ratings, those reviews, whether... Google, Apple Podcasts, Spotify ratings, Facebook ratings. You know, there are a variety of places you can leave a rating. And I've said forever, we care about all of them. Those are the ones that are most important, mm -hmm. except for Yelp. Yeah. I do not care if you rate us on Yelp because yeah. Yelp is a slimy company. And yeah, I said it and I can back it up too. <laughs> um, it is also the number one way that people can help the show that costs nothing. Like, I understand not having finances to be able to help the show. That's fine. That's yeah. okay. But but everybody can sit down and leave a review uh, for the show. And, and this was the reason that the family page started, because I wanted mm -hmm. to make it easy to yeah. give people a whole list of, here are all the places you can go. Yeah. Oh, I left a review. I didn't leave a review here. How do I get there? Where's the link? Yeah. And we give you all the links, and we make it super simple. Now, we're not doing it this month, but... Historically, and we will resume this, we look back and we pick an old review and we say, hey, this person, reach out to us. Thank you for your review. And we will give you a gift certificate to the Whistle Kick store. Mm -hmm. Free stuff. Free stuff. So if helping us out isn't enough, maybe you'll win something, right? We're trying to incentivize this because we want to remain the best mm -hmm. martial arts podcast, right? We, we have a... Uh, I don't know that it's a competitive nature for us, but at the same time, it it, it is a little bit because yeah. if somebody comes up with something better, we're going to find a way to learn from what they've done. There's a very yeah. martial arts philosophy here. You know, we're not the best because we're obsessed with being the best. We're obsessed with, with being our best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, excellent. Nathan Porter says hi. Hello, Nathan Porter. How are you? Uh, so are you ready for your next question? I am. Okay. Born ready. I was born to be well. Hashtag born ready. Uh, this question comes from Gabe. See you. Hi, Gabe. See you. See you. That's uh, actually a family joke for them. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, it just reminds me of uh, Kim's Convenience. Oh, such a good show. See you. Okay, anyway, sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this question is from Gabe. What would a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle martial arts school look like? Thanks, Gabe. Well, it would have to be underground. It wouldn't necessarily have to be in a sewer. 
because you may not have the, the space available, mm -hmm. right? Um, contrary to what most TV shows and movies show, my understanding is that most sewer systems are not that large, that they are not 40 foot tall pipes. And big, you, huge open rooms. Yeah, that you can't drive a car around in them uh, because why would you need that much volume? But I think for the authenticity, it's got to be underground. Uh, I think you have to train in weapons. Yeah, definitely. I think you have to go out for pizza afterwards. Okay. Or maybe the pizza is delivered at the end of class, mm -hmm. kind of like uh, Planet Fitness, where they bring the, the pizza. Um, I think everything has to be green. I think there's a strong shell theme. Okay. Um, so you're learning like weapon and shield stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're using a, sh a shell as a shield. And I think that your head instructor comes by once in a while and says something cryptic. And vaguely judgmental and then leaves. Interesting. Okay. I think those are the high points. Um, yeah. What that, would you add? That, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, w I think that um, if you haven't seen it, um, I'm going to make a plug for an, um, another martial arts uh, creator, content creator, Sensei Seth. Yeah. He did a video where he trained like a Ninja Turtle for a day. Or it was for a week, sorry. But there's one video of like... It's like 10 minutes long. And it's really good. What does he do in this video? Uh, I would have to go back and, and watch it. But he he trained in some some ninjutsu stuff. He trained in some weapon stuff. Uh, it was it was I just remember it being really funny and going, that was really clever. Like it, it was it was funny. Oh, and we'd have to have a friend come by in full hockey get up and mm -hmm. spar with us and take us to task. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be better than us. Well, he wasn't better than the he, he definitely beat him any up. of them one on one. Yeah. They always had to gang in my memory, yeah. and granted, I haven't seen new iterations. But in the first version of the show, he all Casey Jones always bested them one on one. Yeah. It's the cricket bat. Or the hockey stick. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. That would lead to some fun. That could lead to some fun Patreon videos we could do as well. I wonder if we could get martial arts uniforms, geese, do box, whatever you choose to call them, made up, patterned like turtle shell. Hmm. Interesting. We we should we should we should do this. We should do some fun Patreon stuff. Okay. Um, how would people see it though? Oh, they, they would join the be, Patreon. They have to join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistle kick. You don't have your sign. I we're don't. We're doing this in person. Yeah. 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 P A T R E, there's an E in, in, in there. Patreon.com slash whistle kick. It's like patron, but Patreon. It's it's an awkward name. I think they wanted to be patron.com and it just didn't work out. Mm. So patreon.com slash whistle kick. We just recorded a bonus episode mm -hmm. for Patreon. We do a bunch of bonus material, a bunch of behind the scenes. You get stickers and shirts and uh, book drafts. Book drafts, program drafts. We've done so much stuff in there. And it's also the only way to find out who's coming up on the show. If you want to know the guests ahead of time, if you want to know the topics ahead of time, well, yeah. guess what? That happens in Patreon exclusive. Actually, you get that at $2 a month. You know, we make it really simple for you. And then at the $1,500 tiers, you get a choice because there's, there's other stuff too. You can either join the school owner's mastermind which meets monthly and guess what? Now it's tax deductible and you will not find better information for that price about martial arts and how to better your school. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. And the other option is I will train you remotely once you live nearby for free. The, the thing I will say about Patreon is uh, I am, I am still a Patreon member despite being an employee of whistle Correct. Rick. yep that's how much i believe in the company but uh yeah. i am also a patreon subscriber to another podcast network and right now they are having their their annual pledge fund drive to help 
fund the, the even though they they have a Patreon, they're always mm-hmm. constantly looking to get new Patreon subscribers and and whatnot. And what did it for me with this particular network was I listened and enjoyed this their product so much that it meant a lot to me. And uh, I do a lot of driving, as Mm -hmm. a lot of people know. And the time I spent in the car was often spent with these people. And I wanted to make sure that that continues to happen. And if everybody, if every single person listening to this episode were to donate a dollar a month do oh, yeah it would it would do so much to make this it show would, it would be a a monumental not, just, it not it would not just change the show it would change the entire organization yeah and a dollar a month and so for me listening to this podcast network have their annual pledge drives you know what i'm gonna do it because this show means so much to me and i want to make sure that it continues to happen and by me giving them a few dollars a month, it really helps them out, and I get to continue to listen to this show that means so much to me. So, take that, take that for what 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 you will. We, what's the kick's business model is to give away our best stuff for free. Yep. I, I know that a hundred percent of people will never donate mm-hmm. or buy or come to an event. That's fine, but we want to make sure that we provide the opportunities for those of you who want to show thanks, who want to give back, who want extra, more, bonus, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not just a donation. We give you a whole bunch of stuff. It's all about value exchange. We will always work hard to deliver overwhelming value to you in everything that we do. And if you have not thought about contributing to the Patreon, please consider doing so. All right. You ready for your third question? Lord ready. I was born to be wild. Uh, this third question is from Lessie Trail. Hi, Lessie. And her question is, should there be size categories in traditional martial arts sparring? Hmm. Now, if you know Lessie, that gives you a little bit of context. Lessie is a very tall woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, six, two, at least. Six three, yeah, she's... and her husband's even taller. Both yeah. wonderful, wonderful people. However, she is generally eight to ten inches taller than the women she spars in tournaments, mm-hmm. and especially at early ranks, that's a huge advantage. I've refereed her her stuff. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think she says I was I refereed her first tournament. That may or may not be true, or I may be confusing her with someone else. It but, sounds right. But, I've, but, you know, I've known her for a long time. And she actually had your producer spot before you. Mm-hmm. So we love Leslie. In an ideal world, I would say that you would have both. Because height is an advantage, and it's one that you can train to overcome but it's not one that you can ever have full apples to apples comparison. I'm a smaller man. I'm five, seven, closer to five, six by the time I go to bed. I am used to sparring people who are much taller than me, which gives me a different sense of my skills Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than if I spar people roughly my own height. When I spar people roughly my own height, I'm actually quite good because I've had to work so hard (laughs) to fight to to spar people people who are taller, right? I mean, the the average man in the U.S. is Mm 5'10". Maybe it's 5'9". So it's at least two, three inches. So there's, you know, two, three, four inches of reach on hands and feet. That's a big deal, right? Um. But I've also never thought, you know, this is unfair. Maybe it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I was yeah. I was born this way. Mm-hmm. Born she, ready. She was born. She was tall. Born tall. I was born to be wild. That's right. And you have to work with what you have. Now, we in the martial arts like to 
you know, we, we, when we talk about self-defense, we talk about the fact that you will probably be attacked by someone taller than you. Mm -hmm. Just generally works out that way statistically. If not taller, bigger at least. Yes. And we also teach that that height can be a disadvantage if approached correctly. If I was sparring Lessie, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Try to stay inside her kicking range. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or far out and get in. Small people are generally faster, right? So you find ways that it impacts your strategy. Should there be? It should be an option. Mm. Because I think it gives another way of training. I'm going to learn different stuff training people my own height than mm -hmm. if I am That's sparring true. a child who's smaller than me or, in, you know, heck, a lot of children taller than me. Someone smaller than me versus someone <laughs> taller than me. And I appreciate that variety because, as I've said many times on the show, a diverse martial artist is a better martial artist. Hmm. How realistic would it be? I don't do many tournaments. In fact, I went to my first tournament last May for the first time in like 15-ish years. Mm -hmm. um, I have to imagine statistically there are less females that are involved in martial arts. Yes. Uh, I have to imagine statistically the amount of martial arts that train in the world is much bigger than those that actually go to competitions. So now Absolutely. we're dwindling it down even smaller. Yep. So in Leslie's case, she is female. Yep. She's going to a smaller subset of those that go to tournaments. Yep. Is her division going to be just her? And then when we factor in height, where she is statistically on saying. one extreme of the bell curve. Yeah. Yeah. If we were looking at height and, and forget about, age and rank appropriateness, right? Like yeah. this, could this happen at larger events? Yes. Now the, the devil's advocate here could be, well, if we had more separation among height, weight, in addition to age and rank, maybe people would be more comfortable competing. Yeah. Okay. I see that. I, I could see how that is a, a possibility. I don't think it would work out that way in practice because mm -hmm. I think most people don't compete for other reasons. Yep. But I think it becomes interesting. Let's face it. In every combat sport, reach is part of the equation. When you're, you're talking about boxing or MMA, people are talking about reach. So it is a factor. And finding ways to remove that from the list of factors is at least intriguing. Interesting. Yeah, I like it. Um, Stacy's in the chat. She says Hi, hello. Hi, Stacey. Hello. Uh, Mark Warner says, here I am to save the day, Mighty Tashi. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, let's talk a little bit before we get into our last question about the new stuff going on here at Whistlecake. Sure. And some of the new programs that we're doing. Yeah. So if you've been following along for a while, you know that I've enjoyed putting together training programs. You know, Whistlekick is, the term we use internally is style agnostic. We are not a karate company. We're not a taekwondo company. We're not a kung fu company. We're a martial arts company, which carries with it some difficulties in that we don't use style specific language mm -hmm. even though much of the world refers to a martial arts training environment as a dojo we don't do that we try not to sometimes we'll share quotes on social media that are like that and sometimes the team slips and and we'll use terms like that but it means we stay very neutral that also means that the things that i'm fairly skilled at in my martial arts repertoire are not applicable to teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to teach you how to kick. Yep. Because the way I kick is not the way everyone else's kick kicks. And I'm not going to use the whistle kick platform to say, this is how you should kick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it, it flies in the face of being style agnostic. But there are things that are universal. Strength and speed and flexibility and balance, etc. And that's what we've started doing. So we rolled out our core four, the force program for strength, the fuel program, for cardio, the fast program for speed, and the flex program for flexibility. I had an idea at the end of last year. What if we did a daily email 30-day challenge? Mm -hmm. So we rolled that out, made it free, and a ton of people did it. And in fact, a lot of people finished it, way more than finished. I think it was roughly 40% of people finished it. Mm -hmm. And huge numbers came through. It was awesome. And I said, well, we got to follow this up. So we followed that up with 
Kick Clinic, which was a 30 day, 10 minute a day email program to make you a better kicker, not by telling you, here's how you kick, but let's get you better at the strength and the flexibility and the speed and all these other things. To do whatever kick you want. To do your kicks, your way, yep. your style. Yep. And that went really well. And I said, all right, let's take the flex program and let's adapt that into this. And uh, once again, the flex program is free. The 30 day challenge is free. Kick clinic is not free. Once again, we have a ton of people going through it and I'm seeing the numbers and they look good. Not as many people are going to finish this one. It's okay. We could, you know, still 10 minutes a day, still a daily email builds on your progress because let's face it, daily habits lead to successes. Yep. It's not the thing you do once. It's the thing you do every day that gets you to your goals. And there's another one coming. And then there's another one coming. We're going to get to probably 12 or 15 and see what's going on then because I've got a bunch of other ideas. And if you want to check out Flex or you want to do the 30-day challenge or you want to grab Kick Clinic or any of these others, they're all available at whistlekick.com. And if you use the code podcast15, you can see 15% on the paid ones. And I would challenge you, genuinely, you will not find better programming, even on the paid ones, for anything close to the price that these are rolled out. Why do so many people have trouble with flexibility? Because 95% of the martial arts population is using old information on flexibility. Mm. You don't tear your muscles when you stretch. That's called an injury. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. You don't injure yourself and get better. And in fact, if you pick up the full flex program, which again is free, if you prefer to go through it that way, it's referenced, footnoted. I mean, I did hours of research in scientific papers. I didn't just go read somebody's book and then copy it. I went back to the first, the original source material. There is nothing out there that's more research that I'm aware of. And the rest of our programs are similar. So 10 minutes a day and it's free. The next time you say, I wish I was more flexible, recognize that you have an option. And if you choose not to do it, you actually don't want to get more flexible. There you go. All right. You ready for your last question? Yes. Okay. This We started with Chris Rickard. We're going to end with Chris Rickard. It sounds morbid. Is this the circle of life? Well, I didn't say we're is, ending Is he Chris the Lion Rickard. King? No. I didn't say we're ending Chris Rickard. <laughs> I hope we're not ending Chris Rickard. Ending with we need him. his question. He's a very valuable member of the team. I agree. All right. His question. Tomorrow we train outside. Where is class held and why? There's a lot of snow on the ground. That doesn't change the question. I feel like I'm missing part of the question. Nope. Who's we? It could be whoever you want. I'm a big fan of tra training on grass. Mm -hmm. I like training on grass. I like training on slightly uneven ground, slightly sloped ground, because even, even my backyard, even the flatter parts of my backyard, I've fallen over training because mm -hmm. balance is completely different. And yet that's the real world. We're used to training generally on these flat surfaces, mm -hmm. uh, you know, perfectly level mats or hardwood or whatever, usually barefoot. And then we get outside on even ground wearing shoes and things work really differently. So I think if it was that impromptu and I didn't have other information about who, what, when, where, why, that would be the focus. It would be probably a class rooted in ha balance mm -hmm. to see where that took us. The question was open ended on purpose. I'm sure. I'm sure it that was. It, it could be we're having class outside tomorrow in the Bahamas. Well, why? You know, maybe I want to go to the Bahamas. Okay. Um, for me, it would be outside here in Vermont or New Hampshire. How often was the last time you trained wearing a winter coat? Very different doing anything. Sure. Wearing winter coat, maybe snow pants, big winter boots. And I thought about this actually just a week and a half ago. And we got we got another big snowstorm. I don't know how much you got up here. Uh, in Keene, we only got twenty two inches, twenty four inches. Yeah. 
So in Keene, we only got about 12 to maybe 14 inches. But if you drove 15 minutes outside of town, 40 inches was recorded. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and so when I went out to snowblow my driveway and put on my snow pants and put on my big Sorel boots, put on my coat, and I thought, wow, well, cotton would be very different than this. And I and when I was done snowblowing my driveway, I did it. And people from the South might say, yeah, but Andrew, people don't get into altercations in winter. People are literally stealing other people's winter coats. Yep. Like the 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 Canada Goose. Is that the brand? The very expensive I don't know. coats. There, there's a brand. And they, they start at like $250. They uh, go up to like $1,200. There have been a whole bunch of cases of people in Montreal being assaulted for their coats well and the fact so, so you can't fight off the person for your coat because you're in your coat well and someone in the south saying you know altercations aren't going to happen when it's cold outside so half of the year people just become pacifistic pacifistic pacifists pacifists like just six months pacifists ah <laughs> so like that's a, a, kind of laughable like it's cold up here right. like at least just, four months out of the year just be, i wish it was only four months just because People from the south don't want to go outside when it's cold. Yeah. We just we just deal. Part of life. Yeah. So anyway, good snow tires seven months a year. I almost took my studded snow tires off a week ago. I was like, nah. I'm glad I left them on. Mine are coming off uh, the last two weeks of April. One car, one week. Other than other week. That concludes our last cube. No more cues. Like symbols. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you to Lessie, Chris, and Gabe for the great questions. I appreciate it. I have fun with these because I don't know them ahead of time. Yeah. That's what makes it fun. If you want to support us, we talked about reviews. We talked about products. We talked about all those things. Please consider supporting us as we grow and we grab big new guests. Let's face it. If there's more money, there's more cool stuff we can do. So we will all benefit as that money grows. So please consider throwing some into the pot. If you have a question for the next one of these episodes, find Andrew. You can email him, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. My email is jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media everywhere you might think of is at whistlekick because we're super creative with these things. And that takes us to the end of another one. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.